And now Sean and Mackenzie will present their pitch to the judges. How's it going? Mm -hmm. I'm Mackenzie, like you said. And I'm Sean. And uh, our story is a mixture of mystery horror, but we're using the soundtrack mystery. Um, to start it off, our log line consists of a char our character, um, Troy, is uh, faced with a problem, and his problem results in a death. So there's a death, and he's faced to um, somehow figure out what to do, and he's faced to make this choice, this big choice in his life. So to start it off, um, Troy is your average teenager, uh, age 17, and he is um, just average teenager, any average, um, just like me and him. And he's... Um, looking to make some uh, plans for the night. And he is texting his friend. He's in the car, and he's driving back from getting some pizza because, you know, he wants to hang out with his friend. So he's texting his friend. And it's raining, and it's a kind of cold, dark, dark outside. Um, and he hits him. He hits, uh, he hits uh, someone, something. And he doesn't really know. He gets out of the car to check. And it's a a person. He killed someone. And he quickly gets in the car. He gets out of there. He's at a red stop. There's a stoplight. And police cars are flying by, and he's just freaking out. He doesn't know what to do. Um, kick from there. And he gets all depressed, and he's freaking out because he just noticed that he killed, he killed a guy. And so out of that, he just runs. He runs away from the situation because that's what he thinks the best he can do. He wouldn't go back to the police because he doesn't want to turn himself in. And so he wants to go somewhere where he can be alone. So he goes to a forest and when he's there, he's like, he's thinking about what he's done and he's getting all depressed and freaking out and he just passes out in the forest. He wakes up one morning, uh, the next morning, and he uh, realizes that his phone's just blown up with text messages, calls from his friend. His friend's just worried, he doesn't know where he's at. And he, that big choice comes up, do I, do I go back? Or do I just totally skip town, go away? And he decides to actually turn himself in, so he's sitting there in the, uh, in the parking lot of the police station, yeah. thinking about his life. And he doesn't know what to do, so he just walks up in the police station to turn himself in. That's our story. All right, nice story, guys. Judges, what do you think about it? The, I, I lost something in between, and I think that's where I got stuck, was... Um, I got stuck on when, if something like, if he's freaking out all of those times, how is it he falls asleep? So there was a little level in my mind about un, like unbelievability, sort of. He falls asleep, so that I found interesting. He wakes up, it's morning, and then he's found at the police station, and he's giving himself up. So what I, I'm wondering is, and given that I think this story could be told in three minutes, I'm a little bit challenged by what we know about him. Um, do we have any precursor to the kind of person he is of why he's stuck in that sort of dilemma of wanting to run away because he's scared, really, is probably, I think. I don't know. I, I feel like I, as an audience member, I'm sort of filling in a little bit. Um, so I think there needs to be some clarity. Uh, and I know the experts over here will be able to share that with you better than I could. Um, but I think it's something that could be told. I just think there's some complexity or some holes that I, I as an audience member, would want to know more. All right. So I'm going to make a guess here that you guys have thought up a couple of scenes and you've thought these scenes up in a very epic fashion as how you would film them or how they would look. And they don't have a connection. Um, 
the whole thing about a story arc and it can happen in 30 seconds in a commercial or it can happen in three hours in a giant epic movie of dwarves and elves. But you, ha you have someone, you introduce them, they go through a trial and then they change. And our character in this one doesn't have a reason to change. You've, you've made the change. He runs off to the woods, falls asleep, wakes up, goes and turns himself in, but we don't know why. And you, you can't just run to the woods and then go, I'm going to turn myself in. This person changes for some reason. They have a reason why they decide to go back and go and right this wrong. They go turn themselves in. There's a reason why they're in the woods. There's a re Everything has to have a reason. You have to believe that reason more than anyone else has to so that you can convey that into your film. And it didn't feel like you even bought your own story. It felt like there was a couple of moments where you really wanted to film this scene, but then that was kind of it. So my recommendation is, is why? Because the scenes don't matter. You can make a scene be anything you want it to be anytime, anywhere. It's the what this person is going through and the change and why. That's what matters. After that, you can make any scene you want fit it. Yep. <clears throat> you start off by saying mystery and horror, and it was a little bit of a mystery at the end. Um, just seems to be a lot of separate anecdotes that are kind of falling falling together. Um, and I also have to, once again, like kind of challenge you to the fact is how is this going to get conveyed? Um, the freaking out depressed at the same time is a kind of, you know, is a very difficult thing for somebody to do because it would make them into some kind of split personality kind of deal, which might be really difficult. And yeah, looking for that resolution, we talk about the story arc there at some stage, it's like a heroic journey that's taken place. It's nearly everything that you'll ever see in the cinema is based on that. And there has to be this point at which there's this bam, what causes the resolution to happen? The story's done by the time he's going to the police station. So, I think you really need to think about how you're going to get from the beginning to the end and not have us make these huge jumps and, and have us left with so many questions. Because, you know, texting, driving, killing somebody, and then we're in the woods is kind of like, whoa, okay, all right, yeah. So, yeah, just think about the story a lot more and decide just that point what's going to be the, the big light bulb that goes off that makes this person turn around and turn himself in. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck with that. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, judges. Um, that is all for the pitches that we have today. And we'll just start building up with what we have. Thank you for all that information and feedback that you gave us. They'll be so much better now that you were here. <laughs> Dance party. That's our show. Dance party. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 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 oh boy. I'm